So, this thing literally just, uh, just showed up in the mail today. What? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> um... This thing better have come with a top plate. Where the heck is it? So... It kind of, uh, it fell apart in, in, in shipping, I guess. Okay, here it is. Here it is. I was about to say, this thing better have come with a top plate. Or, uh, whatever this thing's called. So, I bought another T90 Jeep transmission. This one I bought on eBay, and I paid extra to have this thing fully rebuilt and gone through. I'm not really sure about the rebuilt part, uh, but it's definitely been gone through and clean. It's also got new synchros. I'm not really sure about uh, the, not sure about this gear. This is the low range and reverse gear. This thing's kind of got a lot of wear to it. It also has some rust pitting and rust damage, so I may see if I can find another one on eBay. If you can find them on eBay, these are these are not that expensive. These are like 20 or 30 bucks, so I may see if I can buy another one. Also, I'm realizing I don't see a gasket for, to put this on, to you know, for the top bell thing, I think that's what these are called, like the top bell shifter. I don't see a gasket for that, so I also gotta buy that. Other than that, this thing looks in great shape. Uh, everything seems to be working and mostly here. I'm also gonna have to find the, uh, the nut that goes on this. We're definitely gonna need that, so I also have to buy that. So we're gonna be using this in pretty much the exact same setup as the CBR1000, for those who don't remember or haven't seen that project. We're using this as a secondary transmission for this project. This gives us high range, medium range, and low range, and reverse. And it's in, uh, these things are way cheaper than any of those reverse, because I've, I've looked up in the past trying to find a easy way to add reverse to motorcycle engines, and you can find these reverse gearboxes but those are like th three or four thousand dollars if you can buy them, if you can find them on eBay, and they only give you reverse. This was only nine hundred dollars for a fully rebuilt T90 transmission, and this gives us low range and medium range. So I'd say this is a lot better, especially for this project where we got giant tires, we got four wheel drive. We're really gonna need low range, and this gives us low range. So. Now we're actually, we're not ready for this yet. We're not ready to put this on the frame yet. So let's put this back together. Let's put it to the side and let's continue working on the frame. So first I want to figure out how tall the frame's gonna be. So I hung this off the ceiling, and I think I think this is a good height. I've already checked it with my helmet, and I got plenty of headspace. I also want to make sure that uh, anybody that's taller than me, which is most people, uh, can get in this thing and wear a helmet and not have their head hit the top of the hit the top of the frame. So I think this is a good height. It looks good for you know, the height of this thing, so... Because this this determines how, how tall I make the side rails, because I want this to be in the middle of the top and bottom tube, which means we're only gonna have this much space to get in and out of this thing, but uh, it's not gonna be that hard, I don't think. I don't know, I may add this a little bit lower. This is... This is uh, almost four feet. This is 47 inches. So being two feet would be in the middle. What if I did it at 22 inches? 22 inches from the bottom bar. 
Let's do that. Now first, I wanna make something that's gonna help me hold a piece of tubing in place at a certain angle, and I can adjust that angle to whatever I need. So, let's tack this thing together. So I intentionally, I cut these longer because I'm not sure exactly on what height I want these. This is definitely, obviously, way too, way too high. So I think I'm gonna, I'm trying to get the feel for how, you know, what it's gonna be like sitting in this thing. You know, is this, is this too high? Also, I did cut the back one one inch taller, so therefore I can angle it down. I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave it or cut these equal length, I'm not sure. Let me drop these two inches and see what that looks like. That definitely looks a lot better. So, yeah. I think that looks good. Uh, I'm going to cut two inches off of each of these, and if we want to take more material off, to lower it anymore, we can always do that later. Uh, I think this, this looks pretty good. Now actually, before we continue any more on the frame, we need to finish the front suspension. Now, let's, let's move around some stuff, let's figure out where the front bumper is going to be, then we can add the top rails that are going to be parallel with these, we need to figure out the distance, you know, the width and everything. Then once we get those tacked into place, then we can start working on the top A-arms.
Now, I tacked all this stuff together to figure out where the bu bumper's gonna go. You know, I can kind of adjust it slightly. So, I think it's gonna go right here. This is sticking out like three inches past the front tires. So I think that's pretty good. So, we need to cut these a bit shorter, cut them at an angle, and then weld a new tubing going from here up to here. So we can always cut this bumper shorter if we want to, it's easier just to cut it longer than you think you're going to need it and then just cut it shorter later or if we like it, we can always leave it. So Now to have proper A-arm suspension geometry and all that kind of stuff, we need to widen this. I put these here just to kind of help me figure out where the front bumper is going to go. Now that we got that in place, uh, we need to widen these by two inches on either side. That's going to make it to where the top A-arm's a little bit shorter than the bottom A-arm, and that's going to help with just suspension movement and everything. So I'm realizing, actually, before we figure out and t and uh, make the top A arms, we need to first figure out where the front shocks are going to go. And before we can do that, we first need to figure out where this front spool is going to go. So let's get this figured out and tacked into place. Then we can tack the A arms in or tack the shocks in place. And then all that will determine where the top A arms need to go. So I do need to figure out the height as well as the exact location of this thing, but first we do need to cut out some plates uh, so therefore we can weld those plates onto, onto the frame and then bolt these. These are for these giant inch and a half bearings. So we need to go into Fusion 360 and draw up some plates that we can weld on the frame to bolt these onto and then we can cut them out with the Arcdroid Plasma Cutter.
actually worked. Wow. Yeah, these bolts are just a little bit too long. I'm gonna have to cut them a little bit shorter because they're interfering with these and uh, making it to where I can't spin this thing. But once I shorten them, they, this thing should be able to spin. So front spool is tacked into place. It took me a little while to figure out the heights, you know, where this, this thing should be, as well as how much to bend these plates, making sure it's even, make sure, make sure it's not crooked or sideways or anything. But yeah, now this thing's tacked up, it's starting to look, uh, starting to look pretty awesome. So, now, next thing is let's figure out where the front shocks are gonna go. So I haven't bought the front shocks for this project yet. These are actually off of the CBR 1000. So we're just using these as mock-up and then once I buy the new shocks for this project, we'll swap them out. Yep, it's, it's a little cold in here. So today and yesterday are the coldest days on record around here. Well, yesterday was, yesterday had a high of 10 degrees and today is a high of a whopping 18 degrees. So it's, it's a little cold in here. I have that heater on, but unless you're standing in front of it, you just don't really feel it. So, for the top A-arms, I'm not gonna bother to build a jig on that metal table. I'm just gonna build the A-arms in place. I'm just gonna tack the heim joints kind of in like a general area. I think, I don't really think it matters exactly where these are. And then just start, you know, bending some tubing and tacking it in place for the top amps. The good thing about heim joints is it doesn't have to be accurate because it's adjustable. So therefore you just don't really have to worry about it being perfect. You just kind of build the A-arms and then you dial in the camber and caster later. Yeah, let's get the heim joints tacked into place on here and then I'll start building the A-arms for this thing.
So the next tube we put on here, we just have to make sure that it's, you know, clears the shock wherever we're ever gonna we're gonna mount this thing also whatever angle we mount this. I want to tack this angle iron on just to just to kind of see this thing spin. So, the suspension travel we have in the front, uh, this is as low as it can go because this CV is bottoming out, and then this is as high as it can go because actually the heim joints are bottoming out. So, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, I clocked these heim joints too much at an angle, so that kind of limits us with up travel, which is unfortunate, but we don't want to have too much travel going up because, you know, at a certain point, then the frame's just going to hit the ground. So. This is the amount of suspension travel that we have in the front. I'm actually curious how much we have, so let me let me measure it. So the bottom is 11 inches. And the very top, 23. So what would that be? Uh, I can't do that kind of math, so let me count. 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 inches of travel in the front. It's not bad, but it's it's not great. Definitely not what we have on this on the front of the CBR 1000. So now I'm curious how much this bar is going to move up and down. Because remember, this is where we're mounting the shock. So let's see how much that moves up and down. So that's 21 and a half and at the very top it's 16 and a half so let's just count it one two three four five wow only five inches of so actually we, we may be able to get away with using smaller shocks with less travel if we only have five inches So maybe it's a good thing that I haven't bought the shocks for the front of this vehicle yet because we may be able to get away with shocks that have less movement because uh, if, if where we're going to be mounting the shocks only has 5 inches of suspension travel, we don't need shocks that have 10 inches of movement. So maybe we can get away with shocks with 8 inches or even 6 inches of travel. I may, I may buy the ones with 8 inches of travel because I may be able to like tweak some stuff and get a little bit more suspension travel out of this thing. Uh, maybe I have an idea, a couple ideas on how I can get a little bit more travel out of this. Also, 12 inches of maximum suspension travel, which w w by the time we add limiting straps and bump stops, that's going to be limited now to a what? 11, 11 and a half inches of actual usable suspension travel, which is not great, but it's, it's I mean, it's still, it's, uh, I don't know. 
I mean, it's nowhere near what the front of the of the CBR 1000 had. I keep I keep comparing this vehicle to the CBR 1000 because that thing is just so perfect. It works amazing, and I really want to try to make this vehicle as close as possible to that vehicle. And unfortunately, I, I can't remember, but I think it's I think the front uh, suspension travel on the CBR 1000 is like 18 or 19 inches of travel. So this being 11 and a half, maybe so uh, that's. But we knew that. We knew building four-wheel drive, CV axles, we're going to be limited with suspension travel. That's just what it is. So there's really nothing nothing we can do about that. I'm curious what a Razor has. I'm curious what a uh, a Talon has in the front suspension. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to Google that. I'm curious, curious what that is. But I may be able to tweak some stuff. and uh, Because actually, unfortunately, I did mess up the calculation of at what angle to mount the uh, the uh, the heim joints on the on the spindles because you always want to angle them up a little bit so therefore you can have more downward suspension travel but I angled them too much and now we're limited with the amount of suspension travel we can have going up but I calculated it and by the time the heim joints uh, bind up the frame is only four inches off the ground which is you know we, we don't want the frame hitting the ground we don't want you know we but I could maybe take a Dremel tool and just grind away a little bit of metal to have a little bit more movement out of this. So I don't know, we maybe can get a little bit more suspension travel out of this and maybe if I pull the CV axles a little bit further out uh, in where, the, where they move, maybe I can get a little bit more downward travel. I don't know, so I may play around with this, see if we can get a little bit more. So I'm probably gonna buy the shocks with eight inches of suspension travel which will make it to where the shocks we mounted lower, the hood's gonna be lower and everything, which that's good. Now we still need to put the tires on, make sure they can still steer, make sure mainly that they don't hit this, cause I made it pretty close. And so uh, we'll do all that in the next video of this project, as well as just continue on the frame, you know, add the side rails, uh, possibly start working on the hood. And I, 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 I wanna kinda redo the tail section of this, instead of having it to where it just, you know, kinda sticks out, I kinda wanna have it wider at the very at the back so I can kind of do a different style of tail section of this thing so we're going to redo all that but uh that's going to have to be in the next video of this project but for now I gotta end this video here thank y'all for watching I'll see you in the next video